Welcome to my channel once again. This is Tishatari. In our previous lesson, we treated the periodic table. We are made to understand that the periodic table contains what is known as group and period. We say we have 18 groups, 18 groups, or, or eight, and we have seven period. We also say that uh, that these uh, elements are arranged on the periodic table using the atomic number, which is the number of electron or proton in an atom. We also said that uh, each of these elements that are placed in the same group, they share the same chemical properties. Why do those that are share that, 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 that they are placed under the same period, they are what? They share the same physical properties. For instance, now we say group one element, they are placed in group one, group one because they have only one electron. Group two electron, uh, two, Group two, they have two electrons in their atom share as well. So that is to say, each of these elements are placed in, in the same group. They share the same uh, similar characteristics. For instance, now, this, this characteristics is just like a family characteristics. So in today's topic, we'll be talking more about the families of an element. We'll talk about families of an element. Families. an element in the periodic table in the periodic table so one of the family in the periodic table we we'll talk about one we have we we'll say the group one element group one element they are also known also known known as alkaline metals alkaline metals it contains elements like uh, sodium potassium lithium they have one electron in the atom shell one of their major characteristics is that they react vigorously with cold water they react vigorously with cold water so we have group two group two element example is magnesium magnesium calcium so they, 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 are, they, are, they are swear they are they are reactive, but not as reactive as group one element. They are known as alkaline earth metals. Alkaline earth metals. So the, we, have, we said the group the, the other family known as group three element. A very good example is aluminium. Aluminium. Aluminium is a it has three electrons in the atom shell. As I've said before, that is why it's placed in group three. So it's less reactive compared to group two element. So group four element which contain the carbon and non metal, they are they are less reactive. As you go across this period, as you move towards group eight or group eighteen, you notice that they are less what their reactivities become what become reduced. That is to say, for instance, now when you see group four, group five, and group six. The, the reactivity become reduced because for instance now every element every element in the world is trying to be what to be octet structure they, they, they tend to have this octet structure they want to have this eight electron in the atom shape for instance now carbon in any reaction carbon cannot just release this four electron so any participating species for a reaction to take place because for carbon to release this four it will be very very hard as compared to sodium uh, compared to sodium that has a two eight one that is very easy for a, for sodium to release this one to any participating species so when you get to five for instance now you notice that this element have needed only three electrons to be octet to have this octet structure that is to say for this group eight group five element to react it will be very very hard because they cannot equally release this five electron to be what to achieve what is known as octet structure. So within this group, we are going to talk about chemical bonding. These, these groups, they undergo what is known as covalent bonding. Covalent bonding. Instead of transferring the electron, they share their electron between their participating uh, reactant. So that is to say, when we get to group seven, the most important thing group here, we are going to talk about the group seven. The group seven, they are known as the halogens. They are known as halogen because they are, they, are, they are considered as salt formers. They are considered as salt formers. As I've said, if, I should, if, I, if sodium, 
For instance, since group 7 element need only one electron, group 7 element need only one electron to be uttered, group 1 look like sodium, for instance, the R281, chlorine, R287. So two of these elements can react vigorously when they come in contact because one does not need one of the electrons. This electron is needed by chlorine to be uttered in nature. That is to say, in any chemical reaction, when sodium and chlorine will react, they are very, very, very vigorous. They will extend their valency without, without, a, without a, a delay. That is to say, when this one electron is transferred to this guy, to have one, it's going to be what? It's going to be stable. So in any case, in a major environment, if for instance now, you needed a particular item and you have a friend that can easily give it to you, you must surely meet such friend for when the case arise that you need that, that particular item. So that is what actually happened between sodium and chlorine. Chlorine, sodium does not need this one electron because you want to be octet, you want to have this eight electron, you want to be stable. So sodium is not stable, it needs only one electron that sodium does not need. So when they come together, they react vigorously. So this, like the group seven element, they are very interesting element from fluorine, from fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, they shows a group trend. They show a group trend in the, in the sense that the group, this and this, fluorine and chlorine, they are, in, they are gases. Why bromine is liquid. It's liquid. Why iodine? Iodine is solid. And their reactivity decreases down the group. Fluorine is more reactive as compared to chlorine. Chlorine is more reactive than bromine. Bromine is more reactive than iodine. They show a group trend. So after this point now, after the families of this element, let's move to the trend in the periodic table. Trends in the periodic table. Trends in the periodic table. So in this trend, what are the major trends in the periodic table? We are going to discuss what is known as I, each of these trends. Trends in the periodic table. So the trends in the periodic table will talk about what is known as periodicity. Periodicity. Periodicity is defined as a variation in a regular pattern through which there is, there is a change down the group and across the period. We talk about periodicity. Is this is a variation in the properties of this element down the group and across the period, and it follows a pattern. So one of the trends I'm going to talk about atomic radius. Atomic radius. So atomic radius is defined as a distance between the, the center atom, distance between the center atom and the valence electron, this valence electron. That is to say, for instance, let's use a lithium. Lithium have atomic number three. It has how many shares? It's going to have two shares. We said the distance between this place and this last electron, uh, electron I mean, is known as what? Atomic radius. Atomic radius. I come again. We said the distance between this center atom to this valence electron is known as what? Atomic radius. So let's use... Let's use this a, a group one element to explain this concept properly. You are going to tell me whether this, this properties increases down the group or decreases across the period. We define atomic radius at the distance between the center atom and the valence electron in a simplified way. That is to say, let's use uh, lithium, let's use sodium, for instance, let's use uh, potassium. Let's we'll say the distance, we said here yeah, we have two shell, here yeah, we have we have three shell. Here we have four shell. For instance, now we say the distance between the center atom one, two. Distance between this guy and here we have the center atom two, three. Here we say we have four, one, two, three, four. You can see that the distance between this place to this place is what? It's shorter because it has four electrons. Uh, it has two shell. Yeah, it's, it's a bit further. It has three shell. Yeah, we have four shell. 
So if one should ask you now, does what is the trend of the atomic radius down the group? The trend of atomic radius down the group, it increases down the group. It increases down the group. As you go down the group, the number of share increases. The number of share increases. So the distance between this guy here to this point increases down the group. As you go down the group, the number of share increases. That is to say, atomic radius increases down the group. That means atomic radius increases down the group. Down the group. Down the group and decreases across the period. Is across the period. It's a very simple way. We define atomic radius as the distance between the valence shell, the, the nucleus, and the valence shell. So as you go down the group, the, the number of share is increasing. It's increasing. From lithium, we have two share. From sodium, we have three. We have a potassium, we have four share. As you go down the group, rubidium, you are going to have five share. So that is how the distance between the center atom and the valence, as you know, become what? Increase down the group. Having known this, we can, we can move to the next uh, subheading, which is known as uh, electronegativity. 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 We define electronegativity as the ability of, of an atom to attract electron to itself. So what happens when an atom, the ability of an atom to attract this electron to itself? For instance, now let's use a simple analogy to, so say the closer, the closer the electron to the nucleus, the, the force of attraction becomes very, very high. The force of attraction becomes very, very high. So when we come to a uh, period, uh, period theory that have a, uh, Theory share, for instance, we say the distance between these two here, it becomes half further. So let's go to, to, to period four, the half four, elect, four share, that contain four share. We notice that from here, we have one, two, three, four, the distance becomes further. We define electron negativity as the ability to attract electron to itself. So what happened if I should need for the end and the distance between this nucleus to this various electron, which is the group one, uh, period one element, notice that this element, they are very close to the various electron. This electron are very close to the nucleus. The, the rate of repulsion, the force, that, the force of attraction between this nucleus and this village electron is strong. It's strong. So if it is strong here, if it is strong here, using this analogy, here, it will, it will notice that this here is what? Less strong. Yeah, yeah, we can say it's what lesser. It's lesser in terms of strongness. So what happened? The the strongness decreases down the group. That is to say, the force of attraction between the nucleus and the valence electron decreases down the group. That is to say, electronegativity, electronegativity decreases down the group. Decreases down the group. And increases from left to right, from left, from left to right in the periodic table. In this aspect, student ought not to cram this this method just for you to understand that the we define electronegativity as the ability of an atom to attract electron to itself. And in your own terms, you notice that this nucleus, there's the force of attraction between this nucleus and this valence electron. Since if there is no force of attraction, this electron can move away from this shell. So since there is an uh, interaction between this nucleus and the valence electron, you, there's a force, since they are very close, there's a stronger force. So as you go down the group, as the number of share is increasing, the force becomes reduced. It's, the forces are reducing constantly as you go down the shell. So if you need stronger here yeah, now for, for me to, to to for me to remove this electron, I will need strong energy to remove this electron. That is to say, more energy is needed, less energy is needed, less energy is needed. So electronegativity decreases down the group and increases from left to right in the periodic table. So let's use the other 
The other point, let's talk about ionization energy. Ionization energy. Ionization energy. We also said ionization energy is the energy needed to remove an electron from its shell. When in the energy needed to remove an electron from the shell of an atom. For instance, now let's use the, the, the number of shells as well to explain this. We said a center atom. We have period one. Let's use period two. Two shell. Let's use period three. Three shell. Let's use period four. Four shell. We define an ionization energy, energy needed to remove an electron from its shell. We said, when we explained this in group, in period one now, we said the distance between these guys is very close compared to period two. It's very, period two is more close compared to period three. Period three is more close compared to what? Period four. So by so doing, if you should check in, what the energy needed to remove this electron, will it be stronger or lower? For instance, now we said that this distance, since it's very close to it, energy will be, that, will, that will be needed to remove this electron will be high. If you say, yeah, it's high, yeah, it will be what? It will be less high. Because the distance between this center atom from the furthest electron is becoming further a bit, so that the energy that will be needed here can be 10. Let me say we use, uh, we need the heat we needed, let's say we use 10 joules for inside the heat. Yeah, we can need 15 joules. Yeah, we can need what? 20, no? Let's not use analogy for instance. Now, the, let's say, since this thing is very high, the attraction between this center atom and this valent electron is very, very high. As I've said, we might need like 20 joules. Yeah, we might need 15 joules. Yeah, we might need 10 joules. Now, yeah, we can have what? Five joules, for instance, since the distance is becoming further. I would need less energy to remove this atom because the force of attraction between this center atom and this valence electron is becoming what very far. So I can remove this electron easily. So yeah, electron uh, ionization energy decreases, decreases down the group, down the group, and increases across the period so in this aspect we are we are done with the uh, atomic radius atomic radius we are talking the, the trend ionization energy we we'll talk about electronegativity electronegativity we we'll talk about the uh, ionization energy ionization energy Talk about el electron affinity. Electron affinity. We define electron affinity as the energy release when an atom is added to it. So our time here now, please. I want to make I want to make this uh, the the number four point, which is known as electron affinity. Electron affinity. We define electron affinity as the energy release when an atom is added to is added. We said, I want to see your comment. What is the trend down the group and across the period? Please do where to comment on the comment section so that we know whether you are following or not. Thank you very much for this lesson. Please do where to subscribe to this channel. Thank you.